Hey everybody, it's Webby. Uh, welcome back to a beautiful day here in Melbourne, Australia. Um, we're going to be having a look at the brand new 2022 Ford Everest lineup. I'm going to be showing you around each different model individually, but I just want to start the video off by showing you some of the differences as a sort of a head on view, if you like, so it's easy for you guys to spot which model is which. So we're going to be having a look at the Trend, the Sport and the Platinum today. Uh, I haven't got the Ambiente here on, unfortunately. Uh, that'll be a separate video later. Um, so as I said, I'm going to grab the camera. I'm going to sort of take you around each different model from the front, uh, and then you can pick out which model is which before we get into the full video of the car. Um, so let me grab the camera and I'll show you around. Right, so let's start off with the trend because that seems an obvious place to start. Now the visual differences on this one to the other models uh, is as you can see just here we've got the chrome bar going across the middle of the front grille. On the lower section this um, bit here is body coloured and then you've got chrome around the fog lights there. So that's one easy way to spot it. Also the trend doesn't have the lettering on the top of the bonnet like the other two models does. When we come to the Sport, as you can see, the front grille is now gloss black. Um, that bar across the middle uh, just there is all gloss black. Uh, and also the splitter section just down there along the bottom. Uh, and also the fog light surrounds. Uh, but then we've also got the word Everest emblazoned across the bonnet in black as well. Uh, it's always black, doesn't matter what colour the car is. Uh, then we come to the Platinum. So the obvious cue there is obviously it's got platinum written across the front of the car and uh, so it really gives it away um, but you've also then got uh, sort of the satin card grille uh, running across the middle of the grille there uh, and then at the bottom you've got the satin finish to the lower section uh, also around the fog light surrounds as well so that's how you spot the three different models uh, of the new Everest very very easy uh, to sort of spot the differences between the three models um, so now we're going to get into the main video uh, I'm going to show you uh, all the exterior design uh, of all the different models on the Everest in single videos. Uh, and then we'll have a look around on the inside uh, and I'll show you all some of the new tech and some of the safety features. Uh, well, right, so now we're having a proper look around the Everest Sport. Um, so as I said in the intro to the video, there's some different sort of styling cues on the outside of the Sport um, compared to the other models. Uh, they all get the C-clamp LED daytime running lamps uh, with the bi-LED headlamps uh, and automatic high beam. Uh, as I said before, we've got the gloss black bar running across the front of the grille. Um, the actual grille itself is gloss black as well. Uh, and then the outside is obviously gloss black and all the lettering across the front of the bonnet. Uh, and that's the same regardless of what colour car you get. Uh, you then got the gloss black section down at the bottom of the front grille and also round to the fog lights as well. Uh, this particular car has got the standard 20 inch alloy wheels uh, with the standard road tyres. You can, as a no-cost option, have 18-inch wheels with all-terrain tyres as well. So if you are someone who's going to be doing a fair bit of off-roading, as a no-cost option, you can switch out to the 18-inch wheels and uh, have the all-terrain tyres. Uh, coming down the side of the car, uh, we've also then got the sport badge there on the side of the front doors. Side steps are standard. Uh, the door mirror caps and the door handles are also gloss black. It uh, doesn't matter what colour your car is, they're always going to be black. Um, but it's, not, it's a quite a nice styling cube because particularly on a car like the white, uh, the blue lightning or the aluminium, you've got that nice contrast between the colour of the car uh, and also the black sections around the car, the little accents, uh, just to sort of make you stand out a little bit. Um, this is probably, along with the Ranger Raptor and the Wild Track, I reckon the Everest Sport is probably the most requested video on my YouTube channel at the minute. Um, people seem to absolutely love this new model, particularly now it's got the V6 engine. Um, it, it's strange that sort of the V6 models have taken up yeah, probably 95% of all our orders at the minute. Um, so it does show that people want a V6 engine uh, in their sort of family car. Uh, talking of which, um, yeah, 3 litre V6 turbo diesel, 184 kilowatt, uh, 600 newton metres of torque, uh, full time four wheel drive, uh, runs through the 10 speed automatic gearbox. Uh, and is very, very quiet, very smooth. Um, we're not actually driving the car in this video today because this vehicle hasn't been through the workshop. So it's not come out of transport mode uh, and not had all these pre-delivery checks. So I'll do a separate video of that um, just so you can actually experience what it's like to drive 
um, because yeah, it's, if it's anything like the V6 in the Ranger, this is gonna be absolutely fantastic. Um, so yeah, watch out for that video coming soon. Um, anyway, let's have a bit more of a tour around the outside of the car and show you some of the other styling cues that are different from the other models in the range. So you've got things like the roof rails on the top of the car up here. Uh, these are also black. Uh, you've then got the lovely LED uh, rear lights as well. And the Everest badge is actually sort of behind a plastic Perpex, Perspex cover. Um, so it's actually really neat, it's quite a nice design. Uh, you've then also got the sport badge there at the bottom of the tailgate, uh, the four wheel drive badge there as well. Um, in terms of other options that you can get on a sport model, um, you can have a tow pack, which gives you the tow bar and the electric brakes, or you can have the touring pack, uh, which this vehicle has actually got. So you get the tow bar, you also get the electric brakes, but then you also get a 360 degree cameras, which you can, uh, you might be able to see just there under the door mirror, you've got the little camera poking out, uh, and also the exterior zone lighting as well. Um, and that is absolutely worth having. Um, if you're gonna be towing, it's absolutely no brain to get it all done from factory uh, because you do get some additional features um, like the extension of the blind spot monitor uh, and the rear cross traffic alert working in conjunction with the tow pack. Uh, so that's a really, really handy feature to have. Um, but yeah, in terms of rear styling, um, it's much squarer than the previous model where the previous model was sort of a bit soft and rounded. This is very much angular. Um, they've made it a bit more upright to create more space in the back of the Everest now as well, uh, which is really, really good for rear passengers. Um, but as a visual sort of look from the outside, I think the Sport is a really good looking SUV. So now we're going to have a look at the inside of the Everest Sport. But before we do that, I want you to do me a small favour and give the video a thumbs up. But also do yourself a favour, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell, because that will tell you every time a new video comes out. I'm going to be doing some separate videos with the new Everest. So there's going to be one for each model, so the Trend, the Platinum, and also the base model, Ambiente. But I'll also be doing first drive videos. I'll be doing a video of how to use your SYNC 4 system, uh, and also how to use your digital in instrument cluster as well. Um, so keep an eye out for those videos coming soon um, to learn a lot more about the new uh, 2022 Ford Everest. All right, so let's go and have a look inside this new Everest then. There's a platinum stock over there, I'm filming that one next. Um, so yeah, black door handles, keyless entry obviously is standard. Uh, when we come inside, they have really lifted the game in terms of interior quality. Uh, these seats are absolutely superb. As you can see, they're perforated. These new ones are actually heated and cooled as well, standard on Everest Sport uh, and Platinum. You've then got the Sport logo there, uh, just in the back of the seat, which is really nice. Uh, lovely soft leather steering wheel. The gloss black continues there on the steering wheel as well. Uh, we've got the normal sort of window mirror uh, sort of controls there. You've also got memory positions for the driver's seat as well, which is standard on the Sport. Uh, and that's the first model where that becomes a standard feature. Uh, just having a look down here to the side of the steering wheel before we jump in. Uh, you've got the start stop button there for the engine. There's a button here we can open and close the electric tailgate. Uh, this dial here uh, operates your headlights. Uh, then you've got the front and the rear fog lights as well. Uh, the plus and the minus will adjust the brightness of the dashboard display. And then that one there is your headlight level adjustment. So if you've got half a ton of concrete bags in the back of your Everest um, and your headlights are pointing towards the sky, it actually allows you to adjust by moving that wheel down slightly. It adjusts the headlights back down towards the road so it stops you blinding people uh, coming the opposite way. Uh, so that's that. Um, so let's actually now jump inside and have a look at some of the technology and some of the features of this new Everest Sport. All right, so this is the view ahead of the driver. Uh, so we've got this lovely leather wrapped steering wheel. Uh, we've got the buttons here for the adaptive cruise control and the lane keeping aid. Uh, volume buttons there for your radio uh, and voice control as well. And then we come this side. So these buttons here operate the digital display there in front of the driver. Uh, and then you've got track selection or pre tech radio stations for music and uh, radio stations, uh, and then the button there for your phone calls. The display in front of the driver uh, is actually the same as we've seen on the Ford Ranger. I did actually make a separate video for that, uh, so I'll put the link of that video uh, in the top right hand corner and also the description of the video for you. Uh, so if you want to go and read up and learn a little bit more uh, about this digital instrument cluster, you can do. Uh, just down to the left, uh, these are the controls for the electric brakes, uh, which I said earlier is part of the touring pack or the tow pack, depending on which option you choose to have with your new Everest. 
Uh, then in the center, we've got the 12-inch display there for the Sync 4 infotainment screen. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's a lovely big screen, actually. Uh, we've got built-in sat-nav, we've got wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, um, along with things like digital radio. Uh, it's actually a really, really simple system to use. Uh, I will be doing a video uh, of how to use this display in the Everest. Uh, I did do one for the Rangers, uh, which again, I'll put a link down in the description for you. Uh, so just in case the Everest one is slightly different, um, I'll double check and if it is different, I'll make another video. Uh, we've got controls there for the climate control. We've also got controls down here. These are physical controls. Uh, so you've got left and right temperature controls for the air conditioning uh, and also your volume button there in the middle. So it's nice that Ford haven't made every button uh, on the touch screen. It's nice they put these physical buttons down here as well uh, because it's, it's a lot less fiddly and it's much easier to use. Uh, so then coming down and just below that, you've got the wireless charging pad there for your mobile phone, uh, and then a couple of USB charging ports there as well, uh, and then just down there, a little bit of storage. Uh, and this is the infamous McDonald's chip holder. If you can see just in there, some bright sparkle Ford has put a picture of a chip packet, uh, which a lot of people have spotted, to be fair. Uh, we've then got a couple of cup holders here as well. Uh, we've got the electronic e-shifter, uh, which is standard on the Sport model. Uh, very, very simple to use. You've got a button at the front, you just take it out of park, and uh, as you can see, you've got your normal driving modes there. Uh, down the side, you've got the manual button, uh, plus also the plus and minus uh, to change gear. The electronic handbrake, which is uh, really nice. It just makes this sort of section here a lot less cluttered. Um, you've then got the drive modes over here as well. Uh, so this is uh, very reminiscent of what you'd find on something like um, a Ranger Wildtrak with a V6 engine. Uh, you've got two high, four high, uh, you've got the full-time four-wheel drive, and you've also got four low as well. So this is a little bit different to what you had in the previous Everest, but the previous Everest was just full-time and four-wheel drive, um, and then you could lock the rear diff if you wanted to. Uh, so this is a little bit different to previous. So you can actually drive it in two-wheel drive, um, so that's quite interesting if you wanted to sort of save some fuel um, or you can just leave it for full, full time four wheel drive uh, and the car will do everything for you. You've also got written here drive modes. So we basically twist this dial uh, and then it will change the drive mode for you. So what I'll do is I'll show you up here on the display uh, as what happens when you change uh, or when you twist that drive mode button. So we start off with default is normal. And then each time you twist it, as you can see, it changes uh, the different modes. You've got economy there. So then when we go from economy, we go down to the tow and haul mode. Um, so that's basically the optimized mode for when you're towing something. And as you can see, it's put the vehicle back into full-time four-wheel drive um, because it deems that's the best practice for when you're towing something heavy. It will also adjust things like your throttle input, your steering, the stability control of the car. Um, so it maximizes um, sort of the driving experience when you're towing something heavy. Um, after that, we go into slippery mode. Um, so it dials back things like throttle response, uh, changes the weight of the steering and traction control again, uh, keeps the car in full-time four-wheel drive. Uh, then we go down to mud and ruts. I love the way the, uh, the graphics change on the dashboard uh, with the different sort of uh, different driving mode. I think it's really, really cool. And what you can see there is the display has changed quite significantly. So it's put the vehicle into four high, so permanent four wheel drive. Uh, and as you can see, just at the top of the screen, it's actually engaged the rear diff lock as well. But it's also given us these two dials here as well. So you can see the different angles of the car. Uh, so whether it's the, the backwards and forwards angle or the side to side, uh, I can't think of the proper term for those at the minute. Um, but yeah, you can actually see if you're being in an off-road situation, uh, a bit more information which will help you whilst you're driving. And when you do that, it will also bring on that front facing camera as well. And the benefit of that is as you can see here, you've got these sort of tire tracks in front of you. So you'd be able to see if there was like a tree sticking out of the ground, like a tree stump, or if there was gonna be a sudden drop in the road. Uh, so you'd be able to see that before you had any sort of nasty surprises. Uh, so that's actually a really, really handy feature. Uh, so then coming back to the display, so we flick the dial again, and then we go to one last one, which is sand. Um, so again, it changes the display slightly, um, but you've got the same as if you're on the mud and ruts mode 
that we had a minute ago. Um, so that's all your different driving modes. Uh, and then we basically flick the car back up to normal. <coughs> it will take the car back out of four high and it puts it back into full time four wheel drive. Uh, but again, you can select whichever driving mode you want. If you want to put it in two wheel drive, you can do um, just to save a little bit of fuel. Um, but I'd imagine the full time four wheel drive is going to be probably the most popular option. So after that, uh, we've then got the buttons here. Uh, so that one allows you to turn off the parking sensors. That one allows you to turn off the traction control. And that one deactivates the stop start function on the engine. Uh, so that's the one where it you know, cuts out of traffic lights and that sort of thing. And then the last button we've got here is your off-road mode. So if we press that button, it then changes the display of the screen again. So it brings on that front camera. Uh, so like before, you can see if there's anything uh, in front of you as you're driving along. Uh, but then it also shows up things like your diff lock, your downhill descent control. So at the minute it shows we've got the diff lock on, so we can quite easily turn that off just by pressing the button. Uh, but if we want to use the descent control, we just press that button there. Uh, and then that allows you to go up or down a really steep hill and the car will actually do all the braking and accelerating for you. Uh, so that's actually a really handy feature to have if you're going off-roading. So the actual driving position is really, really nice as well. And then it's a new Everest Sport. Uh, seats are super, super comfortable. You can say fully electrically adjustable. Memory position is up there, which is fantastic as well. Um, so if you've got you know, different sort of height of people that want to have seats in different position, that's really good. Um, the steering wheel, you've got the lever down the side now, adjust for height and reach, about time eh? Um, yeah we're actually now in the 21st century with the new Everest, uh, so you can adjust your steering wheel properly. Uh, but once that's done, uh, like I say driving position is fantastic, you've got a great view out of the road ahead, decent sized side windows as well, so the actual view in all directions is really really good, uh, and even uh, at the rear view mirror as well. The side mirrors are also a decent size, uh, and they've also got the blind spot monitor built in too. Um, as you'd expect, safety is at the forefront of the new Everest. Um, you've even got things like nine airbags. You've got all the normal safety stuff, so autonomous braking, lane keeping, lane centering, rear cross traffic alert, front and rear sensors. Um, basically everything you could want to help you try and avoid an accident really. Um, and it's only just recently been announced that the new Everest has scored five stars in the NCAP testing as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so that's really, really good to see. Um, but yeah, as I said, driving position, really, really good. Um, so that's about set up for me. Uh, let's go and have a look in the back and see how much legroom we've got. Now my seat is where I want it to be. So as you can see, getting into the back of the Everest is really easy. Um, having the side steps as standard uh, is really handy, plus also the grab handle there as well. Uh, but the door apertures are really big too. Um, so actually getting in and out is really, really simple. Uh, again, decent sized side windows in the back here. Uh, you get a great view out the front. Um, so you feel nice and light and airy in the back, uh, particularly with a lighter colored roof lining. Um, headroom isn't too bad either. Uh, plenty of legroom. You can even just about get your feet under the driver's seat. You can stretch out a little bit. Um, if the driver raised their seat slightly, you can get your feet even further under, uh, which would be quite nice. Uh, you've got uh, fan speed control there for the rear air conditioning. Uh, we've also got a USB-A and a USB-C charging points there for rear passengers, uh, so that's nice to see. We've got the obligatory fold-down armrest, where cup holders that pop out from there as well, which is nice. Um, great for keeping arguing kids separated, uh, so that's really good. If you're going to be putting a baby seat in the back of the Everest, uh, you've also got the ISOFIX mounting points as well for extra security. Uh, so great for parents that have got young children. Um, let's actually try and have a look in the back as well uh, and see how much space we've got back there. Uh, this middle row can actually slide backwards and forwards. Uh, so you've just got a little bar underneath, so you can actually just move that backwards and forwards. Um, so that will help either give people in the back a little bit more leg room, or you can obviously increase the amount of luggage space you get as well. Uh, while still carrying people in the middle row. So let's have a look in the back and see how much space we've got. So once you actually get in the back, it's not too bad. Um, leg room is actually pretty decent. It's a bit tight for your feet. Um, if you've got big feet, you'd be a bit stuck here, I reckon. Um, but yeah, I mean, leg space isn't too bad. Um, you do get a cup holder here in, one, in this side here. Uh, there's a cup holder and also a 12 volt power socket on the other side of the car. 
Um, so yeah, you're fairly well catered for. I mean, hand rim is not fantastic, but then it's only gonna be for little kids and then occasional journeys anyway. Um, so yeah, you know, it's reasonable enough. It's like most seven seaters. Um, it's not gonna sort of give you massive amounts of space, um, but it is handy to have the extra seats should you need them. Now in terms of pricing and factory fitted options for the new Everest Sport, um, I'll put all that pricing information on the screen for you. Um, it is gonna be plus on road costs. So depending on what state you're living in Australia as to what your final on the road price is gonna be. Um, but in terms of factory fitted options, uh, there's obviously a few to choose from. Uh, there's the tow pack or the touring pack that I mentioned earlier. So the tow pack will give you the tow bar and the electric brakes. The touring pack takes it one step further by adding the 360 degree cameras and also the exterior zone lighting. Um, so they're great features to have as well. Um, and then you can also have uh, different wheels. So the Sport comes standard with 20 inch wheels and road tires. But you can swap, over, swap those out as a no cost option and have 18 inch wheels with all terrain tires. So if you are gonna be someone who does a little bit of off-roading or you happen to live down uh, a gravel road or something like that, uh, the 18 inch wheels with the all-terrain tires would actually make quite a lot of sense. Um, so yeah, you can have some really good factory fitted uh, options with the new Everest Sport um, to make it exactly the car you need it to be. Now, if you've got any questions about this car, um, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below for me uh, and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget to give the video a like also subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, because that will tell you every time a new video comes out. I'm gonna be doing a separate drive video for this car, because as I said, this car hasn't been through the workshop yet, so it needs to have all its pre-delivery inspections before we can do that side of things. Um, so that video will be coming very, very soon. Um, but I'll also be doing, as I said earlier, if there's any differences on that SYNC 4 system that I find, I'll do an updated video on that, um, just to sort of take into account the Everest might be slightly different uh, to what's on the Ranger. Uh, so keep an eye out for that one as well. Um, so that just leaves me to say thanks for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at the new 2022 Ford Everest Sport. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, so thanks for joining me and I look forward to seeing you all uh, in the next one.